I remember a day when I was sleeping. I felt in and in my dream there was this creature that attacked me engulfed me And it tried to swallow me up with its stomach. Maybe it was a form or definition of the abyss or death. But he wanted to pull me in from my stomach and collapse me backwards. To fracture my back. And. Therefore causing. My whole body to. To break every. Bone. I'm sure people that analyze dead bodies, corpses, notice the dislocation of joints and things of that nature on a human body. What I came to understand And realize was and is the power of the mind. And honestly, I think it was my psychological thinking and reasoning, therefore resulting in a very powerful mechanism or mind that we possess here on earth that we have no idea the power behind it except that which we have been taught. And in a spiritual sense, in my dream, that's what I seen. I awoke very, very paranoid, frightened to death, nearly. As I was fighting this creature from swallowing me. And maybe without me even realizing. um, My back was arcing. That I have no idea. But one thing I do know. Is what I said and testified of these events.
it's it's very weird how how this occurs and in my mind and reasoning I believe that everyone when they die I think everyone should just be um, cremated after um, the body parts are removed for for the donors whatever is not used I believe should be burned and respectfully disposed of in a location desired by by family meeting and the remains given to to the military or other groups or organizations that would distribute or get rid of in a way respectfully the the ashes for you if for whatever reason you can't because of transportation and and costs and things like that And in a way, with the growing population, it will also be great in this form of the of the um. of the um of the the method to to get the ashes in a place where you desire personally of your loved one this will actually conserve space in in a cemetery um, area for example if someone chose the ocean then that will be their place to go and think of their loved one like someone would at a cemetery. And the family will know exactly where those ashes were placed. So you have a mental resting place of your loved one. And this is also because of the fact that There has been accounts where people actually raise from the dead. And the last place anyone wants to wake up is in a casket. Buried. 
six feet under the ground. It's like throwing someone in a in a hole and leaving them there to suffer hunger and starvation. Probably the worst torture of all types. I think the body of your loved one should be cremated, completely burned to ashes, to free the soul from the body. Completely. And. Personally. That's what I would want. With my body. To be completely. Cremated. In the ashes can be placed in the ocean in a clay jar or something that will eventually hit the surface of the bottom of the ocean. The ocean's bottom floor. Which will probably break, but doesn't matter. The only reason I say all this is because it's been on my mind lately. And, um, You know, you you hear people getting shot, stabbed, or injured, and our bodies could only take so much pain before shutting down completely. So... When the body absorbs a big impact of pain, it will automatically shut down. So there's been accounts where people have actually been stabbed or shot and they're taken into surgery and they get patched up and go under surgery procedures and heal completely and are alive. So other people in the past, especially when the medical... um. And surgical 
tools were not highly advanced as they are now. And some of these people were probably just buried. I don't know, but I get this image of being underground for a year or two, completely paralyzed. Defenseless. Getting eaten away. By maggots. And other life forms. That exist underground. It would literally feel and be like a knife being inside of you with a knife blade twisting and slicing, eating away, breaking everything. So, with that image in mind, it would be better just to be cremated instantly. And even before the autopsy, is performed on the human body there is no way to know of any like mental capabilities of of the pain that is inflicted upon that body while it's undergoing the autopsy procedures To me, I believe that maybe the the whole decapitation of the neck will probably and permanently kill the person. Especially if that person is already declared to be dead. So the person is already declared dead. Then 
there is no more pain according to the people But there is no telling if the person that is l- Lying there on the table, if it if 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 it could experience the cold temperature of the ta- table of the freezer, there is no telling. In a way, it could be a form of torture to preserve a body for an extended period of time, especially now with with freezers, a body can last for years frozen according to a national geographic channel that i've watched i've heard of a uh, hey elephant that was found or discovered Years later, so yes, ice has a way to preserve, just like your meat will be preserved in the freezer for your dinner, not to disgust you. I think I covered everything. I think I said enough. May everyone just rest in peace. And live life enjoying every second of it because this life will soon pass away. I believe in God. Not religion. I believe we all go and continue to live in the spirit. Whether good or bad. And I believe that order and justice is there as well.
And if any injustice is done here on earth, it will get resolved there. And every action and deed will be accounted for. Like the Bible says, man. This is all a test for our eternal positions and power. But the awesome great and great thing about it is that the more power you have there, the more humble you become and are, just like Jesus was. But it's the opposite effect, remember? So Jesus was very, very powerful here on earth. He could have called legions of angels to destroy his enemies. Remember that? And when he was getting crucified? But he chose not to. He gave up his life willingly. He obeyed God to the point of death. And that's the scripture. If you look it up, he obeyed God to the point of death. And... Now he has the highest position in heaven. And he is powerful. He still has that power to kill and to command legions of angels to destroy his enemies. But he's still humble to those that will submit to his will. Those that don't will be imprisoned or imprisonated just like here on earth. Because remember, the United States of America was founded through the principles of the Bible and not the other way around. And that's a fact. So honestly, I love everyone. But I would honestly, in a way, would love to be with those that are suffering. Because I'll be able to help more people to find God. That's why God says in the Bible to count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tribulations knowing that the testing of your faith or knowing that the testing of your faith there's something like that is being tested. I forget how it goes but because it produces patience and a bunch of things of the of the fruit of the spirit which will elevate you here on earth and in in the afterlife in position and power and respect with other with those around you 
and among your peers and friends and enemies even. So it was all passed down to us from one generation after another, after another, after another, after another. For a reason. Remember Moses' body when he died? I think the bones were transferred. But I believe that with the cremation, it turns all that to dust, so there's nothing to worry about. It's like letting your loved one and yourself to go at peace, being in harmony with yourself and the afterlife. And I can see that if you release your friend, your loved one, family member, at a place that you would wish to be released at, then every time you see that, you will see your past generational family and loved ones in nature, in the forest, in the ocean, wherever you choose. It just gives us all peace and comfort. So yes, in a way, I am talking about like a um, a business, a distribution. Of the human ashes. In a respectful. And professional way. For everyone. That wishes to do it. Instead of. You know. Buying. In a space in the cemetery. You know just. Have the military. Distribute or take transport. Your loved one's ashes. To like a. um, You know like the air force base. Type of thing. Um, Like in the ships. And they could, or they can um, toss them down in the ocean and it could be like a ceremony, especially for for people that are that are serving or that are in the service and that wish to do that. So now when your family thinks about you or is watching a movie or something and they see nature 
they'll think about you. Or you'll be able to think about the person that you love. And see them in nature. Because nature will always be. I look at Mother Nature like God in a way. Because it's always the same, even if it changes. It is always the same. It's nothing really changes. Just it might it might change for a season or summer or winter or fall or spring. But it's all the same. From generation to generation. From the B.C. to now. Everything that we ever did came to nothing. In a way. Besides peace. Peace which is the greatest gift that we were given by those who gave up their lives. So, thank God for those people. And I believe that we should honor them by living in peace and to filter out more violence in our lives, in this world, as much as possible. Because that's what they would want. And that's what they do want. That's what they died for. That's what they gave up their lives for. So you, their family, can live at peace with the rest of the world and everyone around them. They died knowing that you would be safe. And in a better place, a better world, a better scene in a way, like a movie. You're not in the battlefield, you're in a beautiful green forest with no harm whatsoever. Today, through this video, I I choose to be a donor of my life now and forever
I say, give God a chance. Even if, even if it requires for you to do it in your last dying seconds without your friends around, when your pride is gone, knowing that you will soon die and your soul will awake in the presence of the cloud of witnesses that witness your life from your birth to now your current awakening in the glorious presence of former generations, your family, We are the body of Christ, whether we like it or not. 